Welcome back to another day in the life of a reseller vlog. Today is Tuesday, April 16th. I've been busy doing some relisting on my stores this morning, getting some new listings up. And uh, today we're going to answer that question, what is in that snowball of a package that came from Spokane, Washington? Uh, you guys saw it in yesterday's video. We got into it. It's an online arbitrage purchase I made online with the purpose of reposting it online for profits. So we're going to get into that today. We're going to open it up and we're going to see what is in that package. Here's another look at it. As you can see, they packed it up uh, pretty interestingly. Wrapped it up in an American Eagle bag here. They come to us from Spokane, Washington. And uh, plenty, used plenty of tape to get this to us. Uh, looks like American Eagle was established in 1977 a year after I was born so uh, we'll get into this sack and see what we got before we get into that package I'm gonna have a little bit of lunch we're gonna pack up the orders that came out of the big store and then we'll take a look at it uh, but let me show you what we have going on for lunch you see a couple sandwiches some apples a little seltzer water and we're gonna watch a little bit of this fighter and the kid podcast I still have some hats that I photographed last night ready to be listed but I also have some inventory here in the photo station ready to go let me give you a look at what we got today here it is the last of the DVDs from that last 10 by 10 uh, Cedra Woolly storage clean out. Uh, there was some interesting ones in here. Robot Chicken, Spawn, Stallone Cobra, A Variety Show, Ernest, uh, Ernest Essential, Ernest, the DVD collection, Train Robbers, uh, some sort of John Wayne, Rooster uh, Cogburn, and uh, Dead, Man, Dead Man's Walk, some westerns here, D Day, um, Army of Darkness, Screwhead Edition. That's interesting. Redneck Comedy uh, Roundup 2 and The Rifleman, three classic episodes. And finally, uh, The Searchers with John Wayne. Uh, we also got some uh, little baby Jordans. I'm going to get around to listing those three pair. Actually, two a pair of Jordans and a pair of uh, little Adidas. Look at these little Adidas. Brand new, had the tags on them. This came out of a recent storage unit as well. So one of the kids' units had some nice uh, brand new shoes. These were from Nordstrom. And uh, we found these uh, gloves, some nice leather gloves. We're going to list those up. Then we got a couple additional brand new items, some uh, eyeshadow and some sort of pellets for a pellet gun, I think. Splatter ball is what they're called. So we got some inventory set up here that we're going to get listed. Um, we're going to get this stuff photographed so we uh, have it ready to go. But if you guys watched yesterday's video, you guys know I have plenty of hats sitting here ready to be listed. So that's the first chore. Get busy listing some hats as well as a few more DVDs. I did list one last night, but we got to get through that stack as well. I've got this stuff sitting down here. I'm going to tackle some of that after lunch, and then we'll get into that big package. There they are, the four DVDs and this big stack of hats. Some good ones uh, that we got um, on my uh, recent video to my mom's to visit Arlington. We stopped in Marysville at the Value Village. And got a few of these hats. Uh, there's a little Patagonia visor down there. Some good ones. I mentioned them and showed them off in last night's video, yesterday's video. If you had a chance to watch yesterday's video, then you probably also recognize these three hats. Let me give you a look at them. These were the three hats that had a little bit of bill um, discoloration. This one had a stain right here. It's pretty much gone. This one had a little bit of sweat stains here. Those didn't get away, go away completely, but they do look quite a bit better. These are still uh, drying here and this one had some stains that uh, seem to have come out as well it says whales on here with the dragon there was some stainage right here that we scrubbed right out so uh, two of the three uh, are looking pretty good uh, ready for resale so we'll get a little bit more money for them this one uh, we'll see how it dries up but uh, might be a lost cause so that's just sometimes the, the you know part of the challenge that you uh, buy some online arbitrage inventory and it doesn't quite come in the condition that you want uh, you just got to take what you get uh, you know, we bought, uh, I think, what was it, nine hats, and three of them had a little issues. We uh, solved two of those, and one uh, we didn't. So, you know, out of the nine, eight out of the nine are ready for resale. That's uh, pretty good. So uh, $2.10 we paid for those hats. So it'll be easy to uh, make some profit on those. 
All right, we've been getting some good listings up into the store. It's time to tell you guys about what sold out of the big store. It looks like we had five orders out of the big store. Let's take a look and see what sold today. There you see it, five orders for $84.36. $84.36 for five orders. Let's see what sold. First item sold for $14. It's a pair of Great Northwest Karina Brown Leather Closed Toe Sandals, size 8. Next item sold for $13.15. It's a Reds DVD 2006 two-disc set 25th anniversary edition movie starring Warren Beatty, uh, Michael Keaton. Correction, that's Diane Keaton and Jack Nicholson as well as Warren Beatty. Next item sold for $12.74. It's a 124th scale gauge naval cannon G scale model diorama accessory and a pencil sharpener. Next item sold for $12.92. It's a Royal Air Gray pocket polo shirt short sleeve size extra extra large. Fifth and final item sold for $31.55. It's a brand new 9-inch Dr. McCoy Star Trek Original Playmates action figure from 1998. This is the K KB Toys exclusive action figure. All right, there you see it. $84 and change for five items. I'm going to go locate those items. We'll get some shipping labels printed and we'll get those ready for the tote. All right, through the magic of video, there they appear. Five orders ready for shipping labels. Let's get them printed. There you see it. Five orders out of the big store, and here come those shipping labels. Let's get them printed. All right, we got five more orders to add to the tote. Let's fill this thing there up. You see it. Not many orders, but let's add five more. And a one, two, three, a couple small ones, four, and five. Five. Now that we filled orders, it's time to get into that package. That package you guys are waiting on. The one I told you about. That little snowball of a package that came from Spokane, Washington. It's another hat lot. Let me give you guys a look at the original listing and then we'll open it up and see what it looks like. Alright, here's a look at it. Paid $73.86 shipped. Um, it was one bit of $49.99 plus shipping. So $70. 386 it's a the listing was called a huge sport lot snapback trucker hat lot three stripe mickey john deere resell lot so they had a lot of keywords in there that uh, made it interesting um let me give you a look at the rest of these photos then we'll get into it so it's kind of a mess they had a couple they were pointing out there a couple trucker hats it looks like um trucker style um, some Hawaiian hats there, you see, a WSU, they are Spokane, so they have a lot of wazoo stuff. There's that Maui Hawaii hat, was kind of interesting. A Mickey Mouse hat, John Deere. It's a little bit of everything. A nice LL Bean with the ear flaps, those are always desirable. That one's a blurry photo, I'm not sure why they put that in there. A little camouflage hat with the face eye openings. That's perfect for paintball or something. L.A. Clippers, is that? Clippers hat. So they show up, showed off of some of them. There's a 1998 Rose Bowl. Wazoo Rose Bowl from 98. Some NASCAR hats. So just a wide variety of different hats. There's the original photo. Let's get into it yeah, though. It's always a little bit different when you cut into it and you get to see the condition of the hats, see what they look like in comparison to what the photos show. So we're going to cut this little snowball open and see what they look like. I'll probably lay them out in the photo station maybe or, or just show them to you here on the table and then we can uh, go through them and give you guys a look in more detail. All right, I'm not sure where to get started, but I think we're just gonna start cutting tape and uh, try to get into this and um, hope for the best. Um, it might take a little doing. I'll probably have to set you guys down and go two hands on this one because it is quite a bit of tape on this one. So I'm going to work on that and we'll show you once we get it open. All right, we're in. It's really not as much tape as I thought there would be. They just kind of tied these uh, handles together. Nice looking American Eagle bag actually. And they filled it full of hats. So all the hats are in there. I'm going to take them out, uh, put them on the floor here, and then we'll go through them one at a time or a few at a time and give you guys a better look at everything we found here for uh, quite a bargain. All right, I got all the hats out. We counted them. There's 38 hats in this lot. That brings it to $1.95 per hat, just $1.95 per hat. 
So I'm going to show them to you probably like six at a time. We'll get through them. Uh, 38 hats. So let's take a look at what we got for just $1.95 per hat. The first thing I can show you is this nice American Eagle bag. We could sell this. Probably worth about five bucks. You know, a nice American Eagle bag. Good construction. Uh, has the handles and everything. Um, it's a little bit uh, worn now since they taped it all up. But get all the tape off here and it could be a nice little payday. So I guess we can start with the three kind of misshapen hats. We got a, um, what do you call it, a bucket hat, a newsboy type hat, and uh, that hunting hat that I showed you in the original photos that had the mask and whatnot that you wear it during hunting season or um, paintballing or something like that. Let me show the them to you. The first three, not your traditional baseball style, but this one is a nice little uh, Hard Rock Las Vegas hat, bucket style. That's probably easily $10, $15 hat. Again, this is that newsboy style, kind of similar to the Kangol hats. This one is actually Carvin Paris, Carvin Paris brown and white. Almost has that suede type feel. I don't know what uh, materials it is. We'll have to do a little more research. Has a nice lining though. That's probably a $15 piece right there as well. And then this one, I think this one is probably worth a bit of money. Um, I would say these hats probably go for upwards of $20 maybe with the eye holes in them like that. Um, this one is a uh, quick cat. What do they call it? Quick camo. Quick camo USA design Sun Valley USA made in Vietnam. So I'm not sure what the brand is. We'll have to get in here and look a little bit more detail. Um, can't read it off of here. But, uh, no, oh, there it is. Game Face Gear. Doug and Nick's Game Face Gear. So, uh, Doug and Nick's Game Face Gear camouflage hat. Look at that. That's a pretty cool piece. I think you could probably get 20 bucks for a hat like this. Um, it does have the strap back and uh, is adjustable. So, pretty cool little camo hat. People do like to buy camo, anything camo. And this has a nice camouflage design. You can see it's kind of the leaf design, a little different than, uh, what you would typically see it says QC on there not sure and it has the vented ear holes so uh, you can hear your enemy coming I guess right all right so far so good you saw the first three let's get into the next six we got some interesting hats here again condition is always important so we might have to do a little work on some of these hats again at just a dollar ninety five per hat that's all right if we got to work on a few and list them a little bit later as long as we have a bundle that we can list right away and start earning money off of that is a good sign. And uh, with 38 hats to choose from, we should have some good ones in here. So let's take right, a look. Here's the first six uh, real traditional baseball style hats. This is a trucker style snapback, the Mighty Thomas Carnival. Some of these probably are true vintage hats. Um, I noticed that in the last lot. I did buy a lot from these folks before. Uh, so this is a nice, uh, probably true vintage. Uh, this one's Martinez Trucks. Coyote, Coyote Koha, Co, maybe Coyote Coyote Company. There's a name for those three stripes. I forget what they call that when they have the three stripes like that. This is the double snap in the back. Uh, this is definitely a vintage hat. Has a little bit of wear, as you can see, but uh, not bad condition. Good vintage condition. We'll have to clean it up a little, wipe it down, and uh, hopefully could get probably uh, 15, 20 bucks for that one, maybe more. This one is uh, Monte Carlo Monaco, Monte Carlo Monaco, uh, scrambled eggs, that's what they call that design, I think, scrambled eggs on the front when it has this like leaf type design. Um, this one is a strap back, Monte Carlo, so uh, definitely an interesting hat, made in China, so not made in the USA, but uh, definitely vintage. Uh, here we got Coeur d'Alene, so again Spokane, close to Idaho, so we're getting some Idaho stuff here. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. This is from the Merrill Lynch PGA Tour Shootout. The Merrill Lynch, so maybe they have um, a, a golf course out there in Coeur d'Alene. I'm sure they do, probably plenty. Um, and with this one is a nice a vintage snapback, probably from that uh, Merrill Lynch shootout, so a little piece of history there. Now this one is a little bit rough. Uh, I, I'm assuming this is an Iowa, um, but it is dusty, real dusty. We'll have to definitely hit that with the sponge, see how it cleans up. Um, yeah, this one has some significant condition issues, but it is a, probably a vintage new era. So uh, it's that old school new era pro model made in the USA. So this one is made in the USA. So an old, new era, true vintage, a little dusty, 
probably been in somebody's attic but uh, we could get this cleaned up and uh, list it as a true vintage new era hat and maybe get a few bucks for that um, let's see here this one is team bigfoot pro ed SCCAA has some sort of car on there almost looks like a Camaro I don't know uh, strap back corduroy style hat so uh, again interesting hats in this lot that's what I liked about these people they have uh, interesting hats in their lots and plenty of them at a good price point all right so I don't know how you guys want to think about this you want to think about it in terms of a dollar ninety five per hat or you want to think about it as an overall buy cost of seventy three dollars I mean, either way, we're going to be uh, looking to make some profit on these. Um, but uh, let's get into the next six. I guess if you think of it in terms of an overall price, uh, 73 you get four hats worth $20. There's your investment and then some. And then everything else you list is pure profit. So right now we're looking for four nice hats we could list up for 20 bucks. I think we've already seen a few, but let's see what else we got. Here's the next six. All right, you're not seeing double. There is a double of this Monte Carlo Monaco. You just saw this one. We got another one in here. That's the good thing about having two stores. You can list one in one and another in another if you have multiple items. And uh, kind of corner the market on that uh, listing without getting too much trouble. With eBay, they don't mind. And here we got an LL Bean. This one it does have a little dog hair on it. A nice fleece with the ears. I think I mentioned that when I showed them to you. These are a desirable, probably a little out of season right now since it's springtime. But uh, these are nice in the winter to have those ear flaps to keep you warm. But list it up now. Who knows? It might sell. It's cold somewhere. Speaking of cold, here is Alaska. This might be a true vintage Alaska hat. Again, it has a few dog hairs on it. But uh, we got uh, something to take care of that. Headliners by IAAC Seattle Washington so uh, local made in Seattle Washington so a nice little Alaska hat to buy a Washington here's that LA Clippers hat I showed you uh, they, they showed this one off in the photos nice blue and black uh, snapback has the Fox Sports West 2 on the back there this is a kick 10 Clippers it says Clippers right on there so Nice looking snapback. That is maybe a $20 hat. More like $15 I would say. And then here's a nice uh, vintage hat. Trucker style with the vented back. Northwest Dispatch Service. Spokane, Washington. Has the big rig on there. The big truck. So definitely a real trucker style hat when it has a truck on it. And uh, it definitely is old. Now here's one that might be interesting with everything that's going on in the world. It says Israel on there. So uh, this one does have a little bit of a flaw. It has a little paint spot right there. I don't know if that will come off or we'll have to mention that. It seems like it's pretty baked in there. But an Israel hat, if you guys are looking to represent, we got one here for you. Snapback, um, probably vintage at this point. So some good ones there. I think my favorite in that batch would probably be the Clippers hat or maybe the L.L. Bean. And the rest are probably more like $10 hats. Alright, if you're watching and enjoying this, I want you guys to take a second, hit that subscription button, ring that notification bell, become part of this day in the life of a reseller journey, trying to get to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours. So this type of content is something I like to post quite often. I do these online arbitrage purchases where I buy something online with the purpose of reselling it back online for profit. Uh, posted up in my two eBay stores and uh, that's where these will go. If you follow the channel and you follow the vlog, the Day in Life Reseller vlog, you will see what goes up and what sells. I always post what sells, let you know how much it sells for and uh, you can kind of figure how much profit I'm making. I don't break it all down numbers wise but uh, sometimes I will. On a hat lot like this, you know, where you're paying $73, uh, we do break it down $1.95 per hat. So let's see what else we got out of this big lot we got from Spokane, Washington. All right, here's a look at the next six. This is a sharp looking John Deere. It is covered with hair, though. We'll have to hit that with the little uh, tool to get rid of all that hair. Um, the little rolly tool, whatever you want to call that. This is a Kirk CYRK brand strap back John Deere. Um, but yeah, that's probably upwards of twenty dollars. It has those uh, gold highlights on the brim there, and uh, the logo here, as well as the top uh, accents. So I like that one a lot. This is probably a kid's hat, but it is. Is it a Ralph Lauren polo? Yeah, Ralph Lauren polo, one size four six, so four six X. Probably a kid's size uh, Ralph Lauren hat, but uh, clean looking hat has the little horse and jockey logo that people like. 
it is kind of white so the yellow and the white kind of uh, might uh, blend out a little when I'm showing it to you but a nice looking hat probably a $10 piece what is this one a white spy SPIE don't know much about this it has kind of the corded design looks like a painter's hat it's all white um, so maybe that's what they could use it for it has a kind of vented flap in there keep the sweat out maybe oh golf hat so it has the little golf clubs there so this is probably you hit the links and uh, put this white hat on to keep that sun Keep that sun from beating down on you. So Spy, I don't know that brand, but we'll look into it. What is this, Ol Olivetti? Olivetti? Olivetti, is that like a racing brand? I don't know, it has that, again, that corded design there. Olivetti, um, this one is on the auto tag, auto cap, strap back. Looks to be tr vintage, I would say. I probably list the one as vintage. Again, it has, they must have a white dog because it has, has some white hairs on it. Here's a nice bright one, orange from Uma, Arizona. It has a little Roadrunner on there with the cactus. Roadrunner and cactus from Uma, Arizona. That's a nice looking trucker style with the vented back, the snapback. Snapback has a little fading. It looks like they wore this one in some of that hot Arizona sun. It's on the Nis Nissan uh, Nissan label, so made in China. It's probably vintage. When you see that Nissan label, it usually is vintage. And last one on this lot. This one is a little bit toasted, dirty. Coleman, maybe it's that Coleman. Looks like it has that Coleman cooler, that light there. Um, vented, not uh, not vented. This one Coleman, made in China. Strap back, um, a little bit of wear around the brim here. So we might have to clean that one up. That's uh, looking pretty rough but a few nice ones I like that John Deere Ralph Lauren's okay it would have been better if it was adult but uh, a couple nice ones in all there. right we got 18 more to go through three more lots of six I want to thank you guys for being patient as we go through these just a reminder I'm gonna log into the small store and see what kind of sales we had of the small store today and of course I'm gonna take you guys with me as we drop off orders and head to Lake Padden today so stay tuned for that we like to run around Padden uh, give a few moments of gratitude and uh, go check out the lake if we have some time. So if you like to see a little bit of ducks and nature and water and all that kind of fun stuff at Lake Patton, stick around for that. But uh, we're going to get to these uh, remaining 18 hats. Let's take a look. All right, here is the next six. We got some interesting hats here. Look at this. A 1998 Rose Bowl Wazoo hat. Um, there you see it. Uh, the real deal from 98. Seba is the brand. This cap fits you. A nice snapback. Pretty clean looking white hat from 98 Rose Bowl game. A uh, friend of mine, Tori Hallman, played in that game. Got to go down there and meet a lot of the players. Uh, last uh, Was it last spring, I think it was? It's been over a year now. But that was a fun little trip down to uh, Pullman to check out that squad. Um, here we go. We got this um, Mickey Mouse hat. Burgundy and green. Actually, this is Goofy's Hat Company, it says there. Goofy's Hat Company. So that's a Mickey logo with the ears, but uh, this one is a Goofy. It says Mickey Mouse on the back, though, so uh, maybe the Goofy Hat Company has uh, changed into making Mickey hats. Um, then we got another one here. This one is kind of a plaid bill. It says the little Mickey logo right there. And a uh, pretty nice-looking hat. Uh, fitted hat with the extended... Uh, Elastic in the back. This is the Mickey Unlimited brand uh, logo on, on that tag. And then back here we got Lifebird. This is kind of an orange hat with the blue and uh, blue and silver. I guess that would be highlights. Lifebird. I don't know. This looks to be a vintage hat. Um, Sport Cap Supreme. A Fort Ca Sport Cap Supreme. So a lot of these are true vintage hats. Uh, hard to find these these days. Uh, Kawis Kawasaki Team Green. Kawasaki Team Green Motorsports with the black and white checkerboard uh, flag there. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is a snapback. Nice looking hat. That's probably a few bucks. And over here we got old Pooh, Piglet, and Tigger. A nice uh, Pooh hat. Um, blue kind of denim style. Again, has that elastic back. This is a Pooh Disney hat. 100% cotton made in China. So, uh, the denim hat. So there is that uh, batch of 
six more. All right, I think we got five in this next slot, but there are some nice ones. We're looking for those $20 plus hats, and I think there might be one in here. Let's take a look. All right, here you see this one says Virginity Rocks. I think there's a uh, famous YouTuber that was selling these hats. I think his name is Danny Duncan. Uh, Virginity Rocks. I'm not sure if this is one of his hats or it was done before him, but uh, yeah, that's him right there. There's a little logo of him. That's what he looks like, that kind of... Uh, floppy hair. Um, he's out there. I think he's in Florida maybe. Um, he has some property out there and does all kinds of wild stuff. Virginity Rocks, that's his slogan. He was uh, selling these hats for a while and making some big bucks so somebody got one. Uh, this is probably one of those hats that's probably worth $20. Uh, nice Harley Davidson with that orange and white logo on the front there. The USA flag on the side. You guys see that there? And this one says uh, Belmont, Arizona, Grand Canyon HD, Belmont, Arizona. Has a strap back, Harley Davidson on the strap there. So nice looking Harley Davidson hat. It's the real deal, the legit one size fits all. Harley Davidson branded hat. So I could easily ask 20 bucks for that one. Harley Davidson always sells pretty well. Um, here we got KS, K-Swiss maybe, no, Diamond logo of some sort let's see um rcc koozie norwood 100 percent polyester so this is one of those lightweight strap back polyesters almost uh thought it was that k2 but it says ks on there so we'll have to look up that and see if it's anything special over here we got uh scarcella brothers incorporated i-90 coeur idaho so uh this one's got a little bit of Coeur d'Alene on the side there. We gotta swipe that off of there. Clean this one up a little bit. Looks to be true vintage, uh, adjustable corduroy style. Um, this one is uh, cotton. One size fits all made in China. So those corduroy hats, uh, some people do like those. Um, not perfect for spring and summer, but uh, we can list that one up as a true vintage uh, Coeur d'Alene. Scarcelli Brothers Incorporated. And then here we got the Bobcat West a pop group company with the little bobcat logo on there and uh what does it say oh it's a richardson richardson headgear the famous branded richardson strap back on this one so richardson does make some nice hats so this appears to be an older version uh, used for uh promotion the bobcat west company so there we go five there all right we've made it to the last six hats we're gonna get through this a lot i want to thank you guys for being patient and watching all this with me hopefully you guys enjoyed this little online arbitrage purchase again we paid 73 dollars and change bringing it down to a dollar 95 per hat so just a dollar 95 for some of these hats and well, all of these hats paid $1.95. So let's take a look at the last six and uh, keep in mind which one is your favorite. Put that in the comments. Which one is your favorite? Which one do you think is worth the most money? Or which one do you think is just the coolest of the bunch? You know, there's some cool ones in here. So uh, let me know your opinion. I'd be interested to find out. And uh, of course, don't forget to like this video. That helps the algorithm. Helps get me some more views, which is what I'm after. Trying to get some views and get this channel monetized. But enough about that. Let's go look at these last six and see what this we got. kind of cool. A little trucker style. It's a pit bull on the front there. A little pit bull logo says pit bull on there with the little crown right there. That's a pretty nice uh, kind of almost burgundy red with the black uh, netted backing. This is on the New York Play New York um, logo label. Uh, double snapback which is nice because uh, that way they don't come undone. But a nice pit bull hat, nice construction on that one. I might list that one for a little bit more. That might be a $20 piece. Here we got uh, a moose, a moose, a moose logo in the Batman uh, vein. Um, kind of like the Batman logo, but it has a moose. So uh, maybe they're out there in Idaho and that's how they do things. Oh, this says Yellowstone. So uh, this comes from Yellowstone. Oh, that makes more sense. Uh, they probably have moose, plenty of moose out there. This is the Duck Company. The Duck Company is the label. So nice strap back with the big uh, Batman style moose logo on the front. Here we got the old Seattle Mariners. I rock a Seattle Mariners hat myself quite often. A nice white one. This one is similar to mine. It has that logo on the front. And uh, this is a strap back. Um, this is fan favorite is the label. Strap back a nice clean uh, Seattle Mariners. That's probably a $15 piece. Back here we got a brand new hat with the tags on it and everything. This is a Team Lowe's racing hat. Look at the swirl on that. 
that's a pretty cool little logo um, on the front of this one this one has the Hendrick Motorsports I guess they make those awesome uh, builds Hendrix Motorsports uh, NASCAR number 48 you guys know number 48 it has the cardboard in it I'm not familiar with number 48 but I'm sure some of you guys probably know put that in the comments and let me know racing champion apparel there it says uh, officially licensed NASCAR hat it has the name on here oh Jimmy Johnson maybe I know Jimmy Johnson number 48 Jimmy Johnson uh, he probably uh, drives that team Lowe's racing car so you like a fan of Jimmy Johnson number 48 we got the hat for you blue nice uh, highlights a nice swirl design now uh, we're here these last two are very interesting these uh, caught my eye in the original listing this one is a nice Maui with the rainbow design on there um, it says Aloha Hawaii it has a couple of little stains on it but it looks to be true vintage you don't see that rainbow design unless you had a pride parade much these days but uh, pretty cool little vintage rainbow style hat so uh, you know keywords you might put gay interest on this one you know uh, they like to rock the rainbow sometimes uh, some folks do so uh, pretty cool uh, little hat you gotta find the right market for it though you know you could market toward the vintage or uh, you could market towards the uh, the gays and the lesbians. I don't know who would wear that. Who do you think would be more likely? Or maybe just fans of Hawaii. Who knows? So you got to kind of think about all that. This one also is probably a vintage. This is a casino hat, but same that same cloth style. Edgewater Hotel Casino, Laughlin, um, Nevada. Look at that. Has the cards on the side here. The 21, the Ace and the King. They call that uh, Anna Kornikova. You get that hand it's a little bit dangerous you know it looks good on the court but doesn't always play well uh, the Anna Kornikova you guys remember her famous tennis player slash model here's the Laughlin Edgewater and this one is the snapback so there it is this one is on the DP designer pro DP Designer Pro. So there we go. There's the last six. All right, now that you've seen them all, I'm going to move those to the photo station. I'm going to get them ready, get them cleaned up and ready to be listed this upcoming week. Got to work through some hats. We got some sitting here on the floor. I still got to list up. I did a couple today, but I got to do some more this afternoon. But we got plenty of hat inventory. I've been working hard on listing hats. We've been selling quite a few hats. So uh, it's kind of a fun little adventure to do this uh, online arbitrage. Uh, again, $73 we paid for this. I think we're going to make out all right. I see quite a few hats we can mark up and uh, make a profit on. At $1.95 per hat, you can't really you know, miss on that. Uh, you're definitely going to be making some profit no matter how much you post them for. Well, as long as you post them for more than $1.95. But um, yeah, some good hats. Again, get in that comment section. Make friends in that comment section and let me know which hat is your favorite. Which one do you think I will sell for most money too? I'd be interested to find out. Or is there one that you know is true vintage and people want that one? Uh, maybe I'd, I'm not educated on them. My vintage hats and I don't know. Maybe that Maui hat is a big score worth $100. I don't know. I'm going to look them up as I list them, but uh, sometimes I do miss things. So let, let me know if you're an expert on hats and put that information in the comments or shoot me a message. Either way is fine. But I want to thank you guys for watching this little unboxing of the hat lot. I know uh, I teased it a little in yesterday's video. And uh, we got some more hats coming in the mail, so uh, stay tuned if you like that sort of thing. But I think I'm going to check the small store, see what kind of sales we got. Then we got to hit the road and uh, deliver these packages to the post office. All right, before we log into that small store and see what sold, we did have one more sale out of the big store while I was doing that talking about those hats. So we had one item sold. Let me show you guys what sold. $10.60, we sold this lot of three Star Trek Next Generation paperback books, Continuum, X-Zone, and Storm Heaven. All right, one more from the big store for the tote. All right, we just logged in the small store, and we had two orders. Let me show you guys what sold. There you see it? Two orders for $28.86. $28.86 for two orders. Let's see what sold. First item sold for $11.99. It's a medium H&M log, gray, and pink cotton short sleeve crew neck t-shirt top. 
Second item sold for $16.87. It's an extra large Nevada gray long sleeve crew neck sweatshirt top cotton polyester men's. All right, I'm gonna go find those two items, get them from inventory, and we'll get some shipping labels printed and get them ready for the tote. And then we'll head off to the post office. All right, two more orders. Here come those labels. Let's get them ready. All right, we got two small store orders for the tote, and then we're gonna hit the road and head to the post office, drop these off, and then head to Lake Pad and try to get some exercise in while the sunshine is still shining. But we'll see if we can make it all happen two more tonight. for the tote and a one and a two. All right, as you saw, we made it here to Lake Pad, and I'm gonna get some 2.6 miles in around the lake, get some mileage in, and think about something to be grateful for. I challenge you guys, think about something you are grateful for, maybe speak it out into the universe, write it down, or share it. All right, I made it another successful 2.6 miles around Lake Pad, and I'd probably give today an 8.5 out of 10. Pretty nice run, beautiful weather, not a bad day to be out there on the trails, the sun in your face, not too cold, not too hot, just perfect weather, um, so I'm grateful for that. But I was feeling a little bit pessimistic, I usually try to keep things pretty optimistic on here. But a few things this morning, I uh, had my first uh, return through the uh, authentication program, eBay's authentication program, what I thought was a brand new pair of Nikes. Uh, came back as pre-owned. They thought they weren't new, so they're coming back. $157 sale is coming back. I, I messaged the buyer and told them uh, what happened, and they were understanding, but uh, still kind of a rough uh, way to start the morning. Uh, I guess, you know, you get them back, you relist them as pre-owned, and they cancel again, so you just got to think of it that way. But a um, couple issues this morning, a, a negative feedback came through. It happens, you know. A guy got a pair of shorts, they were size 34 waist, he tried them on, he said they measured closer to 32, he left a negative feedback without even messaging me, I messaged him, told him, hey, you can return those, uh, I have uh, free returns turned on, you just print a shipping label, send them back, get a full refund, I relist them for somebody else, um, he understood, but uh, you know, people are quick, to, uh, easy come, easy go, that's that type of society. You know, I think about that, you know, I spent uh, maybe 20 years freelancing as a photographer in Bellingham and uh, trying to build clientele a little bit, and it's easy come, easy go, only a handful of those people that I work with are still around, you know, most are gone, on their way, off to some new adventure, and uh, that's the way it goes, you know, you keep your circle small. Everybody is uh, only concerned with themselves these days and uh, you know you could be friends for a moment and gone the next. That's the way it goes. People are, are so uh, consumed with their own uh, adventures that uh, they forget about others and you know I'm trying not to do that. Obviously I got a lot of things going on. I'm pretty concerned with my own uh, adventures as well. I'm making it all happen and uh, sometimes you forget about calling and reaching out to friends and family and uh, making time for them but uh, it's important to do that, you know, don't be one of those easy come, easy go type of people. Don't just leave a negative feedback without reaching out, you know, there's people trying to build a business and they rely on feedback to uh, make sales, you know, and leaving a negative feedback is like a a, a red letter on their, uh, a failing uh, letter on their report card and uh, that's not easy to get rid of. Obviously they said they might revise it, but we'll see, you know. People are very fickle. So now that I got that off my chest a little bit, um, I think, you know, try to stay grateful for those who are in your life and that do provide meaning to your life. And, uh, you know, if those come along and they give you a little dose of a meaning, uh, just appreciate it for what it is and uh, move on if they move on. Like I've said in previous videos, you know, the one constant in life is change and uh, it's going to happen to everyone. Every day is different. And uh, every day presents a new challenge, you know, today waking up to that uh, news, uh, a return of a uh, magnitude, um, you know, $150 might not seem a lot to some people, but uh, I'm running a small business and it's a hit. Um, sure, it could come back, you know, the say, I got to wait for these shoes to come back, I got to wait for them to sell again, and uh, just little things like that get on your nerves, you know. You want everything to go smooth and it just never does, and... Uh, 
after 20 years of dealing with this eBay, all these little headaches are a challenge every day. And that's the day in the life of a reseller. You know, that's what I try to convey to you guys. It's not an easy little job. It's pretty tough, and uh, not many of you guys could probably do it. You know, I've been doing it for some time, and uh, sometimes I wonder why, but uh, I'm still at it. It's uh, trying to get a little bit better. It's improving day to day. We're making little changes, making little tweaks. I'm sharing that stuff with you. And things are headed in the right direction, but uh, there's challenges, you know, there's hurdles every day. And I guess that's just life, you know, everybody deals with little hurdles in their life they have to overcome. And uh, that's part of things, you know, you gotta make the best of them and uh, get over those hurdles and move on to the next day. Move on to that next chapter, that next moment of life that uh, will bring you a little bit of joy. You know, every day is gonna be a joyous occasion. Um, but, uh, you know, you have your days, like I got to spend some time with my mom on Sunday, it was a good day. Today, not as good a day, but I was able to get out here and get a little sunshine, so we had a good moment. But, uh, we got some pizza in the back of the car, another good moment. So I guess just be grateful for those little moments. I'm gonna go home, enjoy that pizza, try to find another joyous moment and forget about this morning. Uh, move forward with a new day tomorrow. Uh, try to find new and interesting things to uh, bring joy to my life and something for me to be a little bit more grateful for tomorrow. And uh, we can all kind of strive for that. Uh, try to find those little moments and make the most of them. Uh, so tomorrow's a new day. I challenge you guys, wake up tomorrow and uh, thinking about things to be grateful for. Don't worry so much about the past. Can't live in that uh, little moment this morning that uh, put me in a bad mood. I gotta move forward and uh, move on from it. Seems like we live in a society today where we can all say the wrong thing and every word is examined to the to the last syllable. You know, what did you mean by that? Uh, what did you mean? You know, and sometimes if you have ill intent when you say something, sure you should be chastised for saying something improper but uh, when you say it with a joyful uh, meaning behind it with no ill intent you shouldn't be um, chastised for saying something when you mean it in a, a positive way I think in this YouTube game you gotta kinda choose your words carefully you know you're speaking to a camera not really thinking too much about what you're saying you're just going off the top of your head and uh, a lot of things can be misconstrued you know I see a lot of youtubers out there who are really great talkers great orators and they're able to just find those right words and just continuously talk and talk and talk and uh, you see why there is success out there you know they don't stumble over their words they don't say the wrong things and they're very calculated in the words that they choose and you know that's a learned behavior you know the more you do this the more you talk at this camera, the better you get at it. And uh, hopefully I'm on my way to that. Uh, but I got to be careful in what I say and how I say it. Because um, it's very easy to lose a following. Um, you say the wrong thing and they're gone. You know, that easy come, easy go society. And uh, we don't want to fall into that. We want people to jump on board and stay on board this little adventure. And hopefully we can turn it into something great and uh, try some new things and have some more fun with each other as we move forward in the new year. Uh, we're going to try some new things. So be prepared. You've seen what's uh, gone up on the channel uh, lately. Uh, we're trying some online arbitrage, we're buying storage units, uh, we're doing jewelry buyouts, we're going to concerts, we're doing all kinds of fun things that are up on the channel. And uh, I've got more planned in the future. You're gonna, we're going to hit some of those trails again this spring and hopefully do some more photography. I haven't really uh, picked up the camera in some time other than my work with the Snowmish Running Company. So we're going to get back at that, uh, try to find some wildlife and some fun uh, nature to photograph. And maybe even do a few modeling shoots. Uh, you know, I did that for several years and haven't really uh, done much of it lately. So we might reach out to some folks and see what they're up to and uh, see if they're still interested in uh, having their photos taken. Because uh, that was a fun part of life, you know. Things kind of come and go, but uh, that was a fun little venture for me, having a studio downtown and uh, doing those little studio shoots. It was a good time, and uh, someday maybe I'll get a new another studio um, but not anytime soon. So I guess you got to stay grateful for the area of life that you're in, the chapter of life that you're uh, working through, and uh, make the most of it, you know. Looking back on past chapters is fine, but uh, you learned something from it and you grew from it, and uh, you're exploring this new chapter. And uh, be ready to turn the page, because, you know, change is going to happen. Happens to us all, and uh, tomorrow is always different than today, so... 
stay grateful for this moment that you're in, live in the now, and uh, look forward to tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to head home, call an end to this moment of gratitude. Of course, uh, you guys should think about what you're grateful for. Speak it out into the universe. Uh, let somebody know you're grateful for them in your own little way. Um, we're going to head home, have some pizza, and then uh, get back to work. we got a stack of hats, so I'm going to list. Uh, but uh, I want to thank everybody for joining this day in the life of a reseller. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed a little of this content, and you'll come back for some more in the future. All right, it's a little after 10 o'clock now. I just got my little gratitude video posted up to YouTube. It's up on the channel now. That'll be part of uh, tomorrow's day in the life of vlog. Day in the life of a reseller vlog, rather. The one you're watching right now, uh, it's going to be included, but I pulled it out and uh, listed it separately as well. Um, by the time I got home, had some pizza, showered up, I got one hat listed. I did list that uh, Super Bowl 19 San Francisco 49ers hat from 1985, the vintage hat that came in the last lot. Uh, I listed that one up for uh, 1997. Listed it in the small store. I'm going to post up some more in the small store. But uh, didn't get uh, quite as many listings up as I would like to tonight. But tomorrow we'll start fresh. We'll get some more listings up. And it'll be another day in the life uh, video. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching this one till the end. We're getting some momentum. I'm getting some regular views. So it's kind of nice to see that happening. Um, stepping a little closer to that 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. So... We're on our way toward that goal. I'm going to thank everybody for helping me get there a little closer. As you can see, it's getting late. Uh, the words aren't coming out right. So I'm going to call an end to this. But I want to thank everybody for watching this one to the very, very end. You guys made it. Congratulations. We'll start fresh tomorrow. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.